YouTube, what's up, what's happening? How's everybody doing? Got another video for you today. So today, I wanna to introduce you guys into the great world of lettering. Oh yes, today we're gonna to be doing a lot of lettering. Well, not a whole lot. I'll introduce you to a couple basics. Um, I'll show you some of the basic examples of lettering that everybody kind of goes for or looks for that you should probably practice because it becomes a pretty good uh, investment to do so. Um, and so yeah, let's let's get started. <clears throat> um, again, for this practice session here, we are going to need our handy dandy paper towels as always. You know, paper towels work really good for practicing. Um, I'm going to need some adhesive spray, and here I got the Super 77, uh, the 3M spray, but I do want to bring it up that this 3M General Purpose 45, this will work just good, this will actually work, you know, better for practicing than the 77, because the 77 will actually be bored pretty sticky if you practice a lot, so, and this 45, it just... You know, it, it doesn't leave so much stickiness behind. Uh, today we will be using uh, some Createx um, Opaque Black. Here's my uh, spray bottle, it's pretty ugly, but yeah. It's just Createx, so, you know, it's, it's available everywhere. And uh, most people can get it. <clears throat> now, again, I hope most of you guys have watched my previous videos on how to airbrush, you know, lesson number one, lesson number two, as well as my air pressure and paint reduction and some of my other ones, so that you're pretty familiar with your airbrush and you already know, you know, how to use it pretty good. Um, you're pretty comfortable with it because what we're going to start doing here is start going away from actually showing you how to use the airbrush and we're actually going to start showing you how to use it to create stuff so instead of you know teaching you like this is how you spray this is how you make a line now we're actually this is how you turn that line into other stuff so again if there's other videos that you want to see if there's something you missed or if there's something that you didn't quite understand about how to use an airbrush leave a comment down below and I'll make a video for that um, this video will be all about lettering, and I'll go into other things, um, shading and other stuff in other videos. Uh, if you have anything that you'd like to see specifically first, again, leave a comment down below, and that'll be the best way to let me know. I do read all you guys' comments, uh, all your 3,000 subs. Uh, thank you for subbing. I never thought this channel would get that crazy or anybody watch it, so I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And, um, yeah, here we go. Let's get started again. If, if you're not comfortable with it, you know, go ahead and play with your airbrush for a while first. And, um, you know, we are using an Iwata Eclipse HP BCS here with a 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle just like it comes. I don't like to work with the back on it. That's just my personal preference because I like to be able to pull on the trigger from the back <coughs> when I need to clean it or blow it out. But, yeah. <coughs> So some basic tips that I want to tell you guys about, you know, is always your posture when you're talk when you're doing a t-shirt or about to do some lettering or something. Your posture is key. You always want to make sure you're standing up straight, you know, and you want to lock in your elbows. And this gives you a good swaying motion at your hip, you know, and that'll keep most of everything pretty level when you paint. So you won't have to, um, you know, you won't deal with squiggly lines or stuff, but I cannot stress posture enough. Um, again, I always will recommend you use both hands while you're painting. Uh, never, you know, do this one-handed stuff. Um, I mean, again, again, if, if after, you know, you, you've mastered it or after you, you know, you feel pretty confident with it, maybe you'll get away with doing some effects and stuff. But for most steady shots, you will want to use both your hands. Um, and that's just, you know, again, a very big tip that I, I cannot stress enough. So again, let's get started. The first main thing you want to do when you're doing any kind of lettering, is, especially if you're just learning, is you want to give yourself a base a line here. So, you know, a good way to do that is just to make a fuzzy line, just to make a fuzzy line going across 
just like so. <clears throat> um, and that gives you a good, you know, bottom point to where you're going to do your lettering. And if you want, you can even do a top one so that, you know, that you know where the top of your letters are actually going to go. So <clears throat> that's tip number one. Tip number two would always, you know, always practice your cursive. I just, I cannot stress enough how much cursive is, or script, you know, I don't know how you want to call it. There's lots of names. But it's just very, very important that you practice your script. Um, and um, one of the main keys is to use your dagger stroke while you're, you're actually scripting. So you want to go from thick to thin without, you know, lifting up your airbrush, without cutting off the air. Just one swift motion, and that would give you the best usual result. Um, back in the day, we it was taught, you know, that we it was every downstroke you go thick, you know, a, you know, something like that, and again, you know, you do the downstrokes thick, and the, anything going sideways, you make it thin, and that just gives it a style of calligraphy. Um, I don't know how good you can see that on the camera there. So yeah. <clears throat> so I'd like you guys to practice this, learn this, because this is a good finger control for your finger, but it doesn't create very good lettering, not in my opinion anyway. Um, you always want to keep these nice and tight. You see these, how fresh and clean those are. So I would always say, do this and then darken in your downstrokes. Um, this just creates a finer, you know, a finer looking result. as to opposed to just doing it all in one stroke. So that's just pretty big key to doing script lettering and to getting it really good. Uh, I would just practice your script lettering over and over. Again, I I sat for days, you know, and I would just sit there and just do A's. A's. And then I would start doing these. You know, and over time, then I started stylizing them. You know, I, I would do all the alphabet, go through, and eventually I started getting creative and where I started stylizing them. And, you know, throwing some other mixtures up in there that, you know, just made the letters seem different. <clears throat> but that comes with time. It doesn't come right away. I think the best way to go is learn from the basics, and then you know this stuff is it could always be added in later. Um, so you know always give yourself a base, and when doing script, you always want to thicken the downstrokes. Um, that's just you know whether you want to do it while you're airbrushing. or whether you want to go back and do it after. It's both the same result. Uh, one is obviously a lot crisper and you're able to get a lot crisper than the other, especially if you start you know, getting really thick or trying to do really thick lines. <clears throat> it just, just doesn't work as good. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much my first few tips I have for script for you. I will produce a more in-depth script video for you where I will go through and show you how to just produce different kinds of script. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any uh, concerns or something, um, you know, please leave a comment. But again, I would say just practice this, you know, practice your A's, practice your B's, C's, D's, E's, and I cannot stress en enough how important it is to learn script. 
because the script will be used if you plan to airbrush t-shirts or if you plan to airbrush for people most people will want stuff done in script or they will want their name or something you know so yeah that's that's script tips for you so again we're going to set up some more paper here Again, this is just an intro to lettering, just so you have a good idea of where you should be starting if you want to do lettering, if, if you know you really want to do hard on t-shirts and stuff like that. And then these are probably some pretty good tips and some pretty good examples of where you should start. Um, and so the next lettering I would also say that is pretty important and that would just be a basic text um, just not something that looks handwritten something that almost looks typed um, but yeah you you want something to be um, you know pretty legible and again you want to thicken those down so just to give it some style. Now everybody will be like, oh, how boring, you know, whatever. But this is uh, pretty important because not everybody's going to want, you know, some fancy script. Some people are going to want it to be pretty readable, you know, and um, yeah, it's always good. To practice this and again you know <clears throat> it's just a slight difference from the cursor and um, I will practice these you know your lowercase practice your uppercase as well and just I would say the main point of practicing is getting to a point where you feel like you could paint it um, without pressure even if somebody's staring at you even you know no matter what because a lot of times people will be looking at you will be staring <clears throat> so yeah you want to get it down to where you can you can paint these and, and not have a problem <coughs> Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it for the, the print. You're going to want a print design. Um, and again, you want to use the guidelines like I did at the beginning of that and, and practice all of that. Now this next one is a little trickier, but it's also a, a pretty big must-have. And there's a couple ways you can go about making this. So this is a block design, which is almost like a print, but instead of just the lines, you're actually trying to outline the print. So again, you want to do some some basic here, um, and the best way that, to do this one is usually in color. If if somebody orders it in all black, it just doesn't look as great. But um, get some spray on there. And if, once you got your color on there, you do your, you know, your base lines, and then you want to come in there just lightly, do the work, and so lightly with your color, then you want to switch back to your black, right, or whatever dark color you're using, and then you just want to outline. drew on there. And then you want to you know, get some style, get some flares to the edges and stuff like that. You don't want it to just be pretty plain. Um, and again, this is a pretty basic, but this is also a pretty big seller. Um, and you you know, it's just a, you know, a must have a uh, 
lettering design if you don't have it and the main key to this is always keeping it legible so you can actually read it I know there's a lot of graffiti guys who want to go all out but a lot of people want to be able to read their designs and um, from here you, there are ways to stylize it you can always add a shadow you know, in the back such that you can fade the inside going up or down, you know. You could create a, a horizon line like cones. And then again, I will go in a more in-depth video, but the main key thing here is to learn, you know, that you need to do the basic here in order to get that block letter, you know, the basic block letter and get that down. And worry about getting the best block letter you can before you worry about stylizing it. And, you know, I'll take you guys for seven if you, if you want to see more block lettering first. You know, leave a comment down below. So, you know, first I would say learn this, and then from there you can stylize it and, and branch off from there. <clears throat> so that's another pretty big design or, you know, lettering font that you're probably going to want to have. And um, from there, it all becomes a gamble. It all becomes to your area. Um, to the people that you're trying to sell to and such but there are a couple more that I would say are pretty you know when people see them they do like them and they you know they react a certain way so another one would, would be what I call the slash the slash uh, lettering I don't know a lot of people call it different stuff um, I just call it slash because I feel like you're just slashing away. So <clears throat> let me just start off by putting slash. And this one doesn't have to be as uniform. So you can see some letters are bigger than the others. So we're gonna go back in here. And we're just gonna add slashes of lines. And again, this one you can customize it with you can go around and shade it and color it around it, or you could do it in color and then outline it in black. There's a lot of ways. <clears throat> this one you don't have to practice as much. This one is just mainly getting the you know your print. Once you have your print, you just do it, you know, off-centered, and then you just come back and slash it and you have a good you have a good font there. So that's another good example. Uh, another example off of that would be uh, a skewed, or what I would call, a lot of people call a tagged, you know, um, kind of thing going on. But it's like a print, but you really want to uh, flare out the words and just give them some crazy, you know, Something like that, you know, and then you have things here and stuff like that. And again, the main thing is just getting the main style down. 
Um, <clears throat> this one you don't have to lay the, the base, you know, down because there is really no, no nothing like that. Um, you know, this one's pretty wild and pretty open to whatever you can do. So, you know, that's that's another pretty good example for lettering. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, that's that's pretty much the four fundamental lettering that I would say are are pretty much key to having you know, a good, solid base of uh, understanding of lettering and uh, to offer to customers if you're, if you're, if you're doing airbrush t-shirts, you know, those four letterings varied among designs and varied with pictures and, and stuff like that. There's lots of combinations that you can come up with. <coughs> and it keeps it simple uh, for your customers to be able to pick from. But again, the, the main one I would recommend that everybody focus on cursive um, it's, it's just very important and it helps you understand how lines flow as well as it's just a great way to show off to your customers and um, yeah <laughs> this is just the main top sound design you will ever sell so you know go ahead and check that out but yeah thank you guys for subbing if there are any particular videos you want to watch again and remind you guys please leave a comment let me know what you guys want to watch what you guys want to learn and we'll see you guys in the next video